talk about the impact of Kiwi consumption on the sleep and recovery of elite athletes. Um, sorry. So this is a recently published piece of work uh, in nutrients. So I suppose the first thing to explain is the purpose of the study. So there were three things that we were looking to achieve. Characterize the sleep and recovery uh, of elite athletes, um, assess the impact of Kiwi on sleep and sleep health, and then reassess sleep and recovery after a four week intervention. So why Kiwi? Kiwis received a lot of attention in terms of health benefits, but not so much in sleep uh, and particularly not in athletes, but there's two key studies that kind of formed the basis of this study. So the first one from 2011 is by Lynn et al. So uh, 25 um, hospital bound patients with sleep disturbance consumed four kiwis or two kiwis, sorry, one hour before bed for four weeks. There was an actigraphy element of the study which displayed improved total sleep time, uh, improved sleep efficiency and self-reported um, measures of sleep improved as well. So ways of reduced uh, sleep onset latency reduced and total sleep efficiency increased. There was a similar study by Nodvet et al. in uh, 74 students looking, uh, they had insomnia, they had confirmed insomnia. So comparing uh, kiwi, 130 grams of kiwi to a control, which was 130 grams a pair. No uh, objective measures of sleep improved, but subjective sleep quality and daytime function improved. So in terms of athletes, Kiwis uh, offer a lot of promise in terms of promoting sleep and recovery. So obviously they have high serotonin content, they have high antioxidant content, high folate content as well. A few studies have linked uh, low or insufficient folate to insomnia. And equally, athletes tend to use a food first approach. So rather than constantly using supplements, it, it's better to consume whole foods if possible. And it has the potential, like I said, to impact both sleep and recovery in athletes. So just a study flow summary. There were two uh, elite squads involved, a national uh, or international sailing squad. So nine sailors, seven males, two females and uh, six um, middle distance runners. So two male, four female. So at baseline and post-intervention, the participants completed the PSQI and the rescue, which is a recovery stress balance questionnaire. And then uh, throughout both the baseline week and the four-week intervention, they also completed a consensus sleep diary uh, question centered around fatigue. So levels of fatigue going to bed and fatigue the following morning and the are you seated uh, sleep health questionnaire. And Mitchell did a great job of explaining sleep health for me. It's important to note that the study was completed during lockdown, and I'll talk about that a bit more uh, when we look at the limitations. But in terms of results, you can see here a summary of the, the baseline versus post-intervention results, so the PSQI scores. Um, you can see there was a significant change in sleep quality from baseline to post-intervention and a significant change in the PSQI global scores. So it might be easier to see here. So it has been suggested that the, the cutoff of age should be used in athletes, but because athletes are striving sorry, for marginal gains and the identification of moderate and poor sleepers is quite important in that, the cutoff of five was used. So at baseline, um, 13 of the subjects, so 87% were classified as poor sleepers. Uh, Post-intervention, that reduced to 33%, so five of the cohort were still classified as per sleeper, so a, a big improvement in terms of global PSQI score. Then in terms of recovery scores, so the recovery um, stress balance question or rescue sport is based on four key domains, so general stress, uh, <clears throat> general recovery, then sport-specific stress and sport-specific recovery. So Overall, the improvements in recovery from uh, baseline to post-intervention showed improved general stress scores and sports stress scores reduced and significant changes in fatigue, physical complaints, and, and disturbed breaks. So then in terms of the four-week intervention, like I said, the participants completed a sleep, sleep diary. You can see the scores summarized here week on week. So obviously the baseline week was compared then to weeks two, three, four, and five, where they were consuming two kiwis an hour before bed. It's important to note that adherence was really good in the study. So on average, it was 90%, plus or minus 6.64%, but the range was 82.14 uh, to 100%. So the adherence was a lot better than, than we expected. 
So there were significant changes in a number of awakenings, particularly in week three, four, and five, significant changes uh, and reductions in WASO, and significant changes in uh, total sleep efficiency. And that happened almost immediately, so weeks two, three, four, and five. So you can see here the sleep diary, total sleep time data comparison, and the, there's an increase in total sleep time across, across the intervention. So like I said, it's important to note the limitations. The plan would have been to use um, active watches in conjunction with the sleep diaries, but that wasn't possible due to lockdown and the restrictions that, that were placed on us. So there is a reliance on self-report measures, but definitely the results warrant further investigation and replication, including um, subjective measures of sleep. So to summarize the intervention, two Kiwis, one hour before bed is a real practical food first intervention that can improve both sleep and recovery in athletes. In terms of baseline to post intervention, we saw uh, an improvement in sleep quality and recovery stress balance. And across the intervention, it was clear that total sleep time and sleep efficiency improved and there were reductions in WASO and number of awakenings. Thank you.